This video is about graphing nonlinear functions, and we're going to be doing this by plotting points or basically finding ordered pairs that are solutions to the given equation. So our first example is y equals x squared minus 2. And um, we're going to be looking at um, a lot of these functions in a little while here also. and um, this negative 2 is going to do something sort of special to this graph, and um, we'll see what that is in just a few minutes here. And so I'm going to pick my points a little bit careful. So um, y squared, because we're squaring what x is, it's going to get pretty big pretty fast. So um, we're going to keep with pretty small numbers. And so I'm going to do this for x equals 2. Negative 2 is going to be the smallest that I'm going to use. And when I plug negative 2 in for x, I'm going to get y is equal to negative 2, and I'm squaring it, and then minus 2. And when we square negative 2, you get a positive 4 minus 2, and so that gives me 2. So I have the point negative 2, 2. I'll just put that on my graph right away, right there. And then we'll do it for x equals negative 1. And so we'll have y is equal to negative 1 squared minus 2. And when we square negative 1, that's negative 1 times negative 1, so it's positive 1 minus 2. And so we get negative 1. And so that gives me the point negative 1, negative 1. And so here's our point negative 1, negative 1. And then we'll plug in 0. So that'll be y equals 0 squared minus 2. And 0 squared is just 0, so we get 0 minus 2, or negative 2. So that's going to give me the point 0, negative 2, which is right there. And you should always label points when you put them on the graph as well. So I'm going to just label these points real quick that I put on already. And we need a, two more points, so I will do that for x equals 1. So we'll get y is equal to 1 squared minus 2, which is 1 minus 2, or negative 1. So that gives me the point 1, negative 1. And we'll do it for x equals 2. So y equals 2 squared minus 2 which is 4 minus 2, or 2. So I have the point 2, 2. And here's x equals 2, and up at y equals 2. And then we can draw this graph, and you see this; these dots are forming like a big capital U here. And you always want to extend past the last point that you plotted and put an arrow, and also extend beyond the first point that you put on there and, and put an arrow. So these, any kind of function or equation that has an x squared involved in it is going to look like this big capital U. And we're going to be looking more closely at these graphs of this x squared um, equation in a later section here. So the important things with your graphs is that you're labeling your points. Make sure you're extending the last point and the first point out beyond where they went and put an arrow on there. Um, another thing that I just wanted to bring up with this is the domain and the range. Domain are basically the x values. And so if you could shine a light, so let's say I had a light up here, and I could shine that light down on this graph, where would the shadow be on the x-axis? So that's basically what we're looking at. These extend out forever, and so we're going to have graph all the way over to the left over here, and also all the way over to the right. So let me just change my pen color. And so if we could shine that light, then um, all of this would end up getting shaded 
all the way out forever. And so if we write that as an interval, the domain would be from negative infinity to infinity for this particular graph. And then the range, these are the y values. So it's basically This is our domain light. If we could put a light over on the side of the graph, where would the shadow be cast along the y-axis? And I'll just get a new color here. And so if we could cast a light over onto this graph, then there wouldn't be any shadow down here because there's no graph down here. So the first shadow would start right there. And because this arrow goes up forever, then the shadow would get cast up forever as well. And so from here on up forever, we want to write that in interval notation. And so it's starting down here at negative 2. And it includes negative 2 because there is a dot on negative 2. So that would be from negative 2. And it goes up forever, so that would be to positive infinity. And we always use round brackets with infinity when we're talking about intervals. So let's take a look at another graph. This one is y equals the absolute value of x plus 3. And so um, let's see what happens with this graph. So we're going to graph this for the same values of x. We're going to do x equals negative 2. When I plug negative 2 into there, I'll get y is equal to the absolute value of negative 2 plus 3, which is 2 plus 3, or 5. So I have the point negative 2, 5. So here's x equals negative 2, and it's up at y equals 5 right there. And then we'll do this for x equals negative 1. y equals the absolute value of negative 1 plus 3, which is 1 plus 3, or 4. So we have the point negative 1, 4. So here's negative 1, and we're up at positive 4, which is right there. And then we'll do it for x equals 0. So we'll get y is equal to the absolute value of 0 plus 3, which is just going to be 3. And so we have the point 0, 3, which is right here. And then we'll do it for x equals 1. So we'll get y is equal to the absolute value of 1 plus 3, which is going to be 4. So we have the point 1, 4. And x equals 2. We'll get y equals the absolute value of 2 plus 3. And the absolute value of 2 is just 2, so we'll get 5 for that. So we have the point 2, 5. And there's our point 2, 5. So again, we're going to draw this in. So you see it's taking the shape of this big capital V here. And so it goes straight on up, draw an arrow, and straight on up in this direction, and draw an arrow. And so we want to do the domain and the range again. And remember, the domain is this interval of x values that where there's graph. And so again, if we could put a light up here and shine a light down, then where would my shadow be cast? Well, this arrow goes to the left forever, and this arrow goes to the right forever, and so there will be shadow everywhere along the x-axis. So again, my domain is negative infinity to infinity. And for the range, so again, if we could shine a light over on the side, and where would there be shadow cast? Well, the light would hit here and, sh and make a shadow on the y-axis, starting right here at 3, and it would go on up forever. So this would be from 3 to infinity. And we're using a square bracket at 3 because it does include this value of x equals 3, or y equals 3, sorry. And um, we always use a round bracket at infinity. And so notice that here we added 3 to this absolute value. 
and our graph starts at positive 3, this um, where the bottom of this V is. And if we look back to our last example, here we were subtracting 2 from x squared, so the x squared graph is always going to have this U shape. An absolute value graph will always have this V shape. And when we subtracted 2 from the x squared, it moved the graph down 2 units, so it's at starting at y equals negative 2. When we added 3, it moved it up 3. And so we're going to look at that cl more closely um, in one of the following sections here. So let's take a look at our last example in this section. And so it's y equals the square root of x minus 2. So before, um, we had something being added or subtracted, but it was not in the, the main thing. So it wasn't being inside the thing being squared or underneath the square root. This subtraction is happening underneath the square root. So let's see what this does to the graph. So we're going to um, start plotting points at x equals negative 2 again. And um, one thing that we need to be careful about this, though, is that if I put x equals negative 2 in here, then I'm going to end up having to take the square root of a negative 4, which I can't do. So we're not actually going to be able to start at x equals negative 2. So negative 2, negative 1 is still going to make that negative. It's going to be negative all the way up till x equals 2, even 0. So 0 minus 2 is going to be negative 2. We can't take the square root of a negative. So we're going to start at x equals 2. So we would have y is equal to the square root of 2 minus 2, which is 0. So we have the point 2, 0. And then we'll do it for x equals 3. And so we'll have y is equal to the square root of 3 minus 2. And so that's the square root of 1, which is 1. So we have the point 3, 1. And I like to be a little bit careful when I'm picking my x values for square root functions. It's because I don't like to take the square root of numbers that aren't nice. So 1 is something we can take the square root of. Um, and then the next number that we can take the square root of is 4. So what could I subtract 2 from in order to get 4? Well, that would be 6. So I'm going to let x be equal to 6. You don't have to do this. Um, it just keeps me away from death. Okay, so if I put 6 in there, I get y is equal to the square root of 6 minus 2. And so that's the square root of 4, which is 2. So I get the point 6, 2. And then the next nice um, perfect square number after 4 is actually 9. And so what number can I subtract 2 from to get 9? Well, it's 11. And this is going to take us off our graph, but that's OK. We just need to have five points plotted. Um, so if I put what x equals 11 in there, we get y is equal to square root of 11 minus 2, which is the square root of 9 or 3. And so that gives me the point 11, 3. And so that would be out here somewhere. So we have four points. Um, we'll do one more. We'll pick a number that's going to give us a yucky value. And so we'll just pick something in between one of the ones that we've done already. So let's do x equals 4. So we'll get y is equal to the square root of 4 minus 2, which is the square root of 2. And let me just get my calculator out and figure out what that is. And so we get 1.4. And I'm just going to make these squigglies because this is not an exact value anymore. Um, 
1.4 and 1.4. So that's almost at a half, so that right there. And that was 6.2, and then we had 11.3 out here. Sorry, this is a little messy. So in this graph, this square graph will always look like this. In fact, it's actually the quadratic graph, which remember was, or the x squared graph, which was the first one that we did, which was this big capital U. This is basically this big capital U flipped on its side, but only the top half. And so that's basically what this graph is. And again, this is another one of the graphs that we'll be looking at more carefully later on. So we just want to find the domain of this. And the domain, remember, is shine a light from on top. Where would we have shadow along the bottom? So the shadow wouldn't start until we got to 2. And it would go on up forever. So that would be positive infinity. And then we need the range. The range, remember, are the um, y values. So because all the graph is on this side, I'm going to put my light over here. So if I could shine a light. Oops, put, sorry, put my light on the wrong side. So if I could put a light right here. Where would I be casting shadow? Well, this arrow goes on up forever. And my graph starts down here at 0. So from 0 to infinity. Again, we're using square brackets because we want to include the 2 for the domain and the 0 for the range number here. OK, that's it for this lecture. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.